Gary, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me. That's okay. You're, uh, you're not in Australia. I wish I was in Australia. Where are you right now? I'm actually in Oxfordshire in the UK. Okay. How are you coping yeah. with everything going on? I'm, ki I'm kind of, um, I'm going to sound very sensible now when I say this, but I'm, I'm self-isolating at the moment and not, not because I'm, I'm ill or I haven't come into contact with anybody, but like next weekend, I've got like, um, you know, Graham Norton, Strictly, the Royal Variety, Jonathan Rock, all, all in like five days. And I thought, I'm just imagining now if my little girl comes home from school saying we've all got to self-isolate for two weeks. And that's, there's my TV. <laughs> my whole album's all of a sudden like, oh no, no one's going to know it's out. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm here by myself. I've got the bed to myself. Oh, I can so bliss. stay up till whenever I want. It's fantastic. <laughs> How are you feeling though? Because like you listed all that stuff off, right? And it's exciting. Usually in an ordinary world, it'd be exciting. Is there a piece of you that does get a, a little bit nervous? Because I know everyone is being responsible when they're recording this stuff, but you're still coming into contact with so many people. Does that make you a little bit nervous? Or do you just go, you know what? I'm just going to go do it all because this is fabulous. Yeah, do you know what? The, the, the thing is, is I, I'll be honest, I'm not bothered about catching this thing, but I'm, I'm more bothered if I make someone else ill who becomes yeah. really at that, that I don't want, I don't want that to live with. Um, but no, I'm not that bothered when I'm, when I'm out there. I am being careful. You know, I'm what, you know, doing the hand thing and I'm spraying the Amazon boxes when they arrive and all that stuff. <laughs> I am trying to be careful. Um, but um no, I'm excited. I, I think, um, you know, may, may, maybe you, you, you're meant to be feeling right now like you, you shouldn't get excited about anything. But to me, it's like, I know this is where we are. There's nothing we can do about it. And it's like, just get on with it, you know. Yeah. And I know, I know I'm, that's a very general statement there's some probably very sad stories going on and people are losing their lives but but for for everyone else it's like just keep pushing on you know i i was actually advised in july not to to release an album this christmas um but i've kind of gone against everyone's advice and i'm hoping it's the right thing but it feels like it is to me isn't this what we need most though, Gary? Because I get what you're saying. You know, if anyone's thinking, oh, it's an irresponsible way of thinking, you're not saying go out there and be stupid. You're no. saying go out there, be safe, protect yourself, protect others. But you do have to find a positive. And I think releasing music, it is, it's so sad because during this time, it's the arts that have suffered. But during this time, it's the arts that have gotten us through. So the yeah. fact that you're releasing a new album entitled "Music um, Music Played by Humans," yeah, you didn't know any of this was going to be going on. It's what no, we need the most. I know it's a it's a funny one. It, it out of all the records I've ever made, I've never had an album so full of musicians. This is the most people, and and also in addition to that, it's the most collaborators I've ever had on a record. So there's more people. And at a time when we're not allowed to be together, there's more people on this record than I've ever had. And it, and it does feel strange. And I did finish the album two weeks before lockdown. So it was all done without knowing any of this was, and it just does feel strange. I can't actually make this album at the moment. Um, so, um, yeah, and then there's next year, you know, getting out on the road and all the rest of it. Who knows what's going to happen there? But we just have to, I think we've got to try and stay positive. This is what it is. No one knows any more than anyone else, I don't think. And we've just got to go with it. Well, I love that you're still planning for stuff because I think what this year has taught us is we have to take positives from it. And for me, yeah. it's hope. You have to be hopeful. And I think when I see you saying, you know what, I've postponed next year's tour, but I haven't cancelled it. I have mm -hmm. dates for the end of next year. It gives us something to look forward to. That's it. That's it. And for me too, you know, it's like, um, I think we've definitely got to throw the positive vibes out there. Um, but, you know, I've got to, I've to, I don't know, you know, a, fr a friend of mine, I've, I had lots of mates who were on tour when this all started and they've all had to cancel and all the rest of it. Um, but the one consensus between everyone was, is that when this is over and, and we're 
allowed back into these venues and people go into them with confidence, then get ready for some of the best gigs of your life. Gary, I and just that, got chills. I yeah, literally me too. just got chills. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's true though, right? I mean, I can't, I can't wait to go out and go to a comedy show and go and see a musical. I mean, it's one of the things that, it's a habit for me. I, I live in London, so I can do it all the time and I'm missing that so much. So yeah, we'll all appreciate it a lot more, won't we? Yeah, and do you know what it is? As I said, the arts have gotten us through and it's really nice to enjoy it on your own. But I miss, I was watching um, Kylie's live stream there the other day and you know, when the artist's about to take to the stage and you hear that collective, you don't know anyone in the audience, but all of a sudden you're all feeling that same emotion and you can cut the tension, yeah. the excitement with the air. I can't oh. wait for that to happen. Oh, there's again. nothing like it. There's no, there's nothing like it. Um, you know, I've, I, I'm lucky. I've had, uh, I've performed since I was 11. And um, when I joined the band, you know, the, the audiences that we used to have, you know, it was absolute mayhem. And the one thing that's never changed out of all, over all these years is it's still bloody mayhem when we go out there. They go crazy. And it's like it doesn't matter what night of the week it is. Everyone always says, oh, Saturday night's the best. Doesn't matter with our audience. It could be Monday night. They go crazy. And I cannot wait for that again. What's it like to be on the receiving end to that? Yeah, it's pretty special. It's pretty special. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And and I think um, I think a lot of groups must look at us and wish they had our audience. I think we have a really that I call them the army. Yeah. Um, could because you know, don't you dare say anything bad about us. They'll have you. You know that they, they and they when they turn up for a gig, this is no hobby. This is like this is our job tonight. We're going to do this. It's just amazing. Um, yeah. I was talking to one of my mates about you. Anytime um, we have anything with take that on on the air or whatever, I, I say to her, Liz, you know this is about to happen. And I called her today and went, Liz, I'm going to talk to Gary today. Um, what do you want me to say to him? And she says, I know this sounds really corny. But I just want uh, I want you to let him know that I think he's a wonderful songwriter. His words and music have been a comfort and joy, and I just want to thank you for the music. Oh. What's it like to you to oh. hear people like Liz and you, all your massive fans to know that you have had such a massive impact on people's lives that you don't even know? Yes, I know that. Yeah, that's that's the power of music, I guess. Um, Hey, listen. That you, you've you've just described why I come in this room every day and write music. You know, that's 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 the addiction right there. Is is you know, on on so many times in my life, music has changed the, the course, literally changed the direction of where I was going. Um, the times music's helped me. The time music's healed me. The times music has made me feel even happier than I was. I mean, it's so bloody powerful, even if you're the person writing it. So um, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the only thing I ever try and do um, is just, you know, really respect that I've been given this chance and I work as hard as I can at it. And, and that's all. And the rest you just hope for. You hope yeah. for that connection from somebody. The great thing that you get to do in music as well is that you can go out and do it on your own or you can do it with others. And I never, like I saw you guys perform together, but I never would have thought there'd be a Latin inspired single <laughs> from Michael Bublé and Gary Barlow. I didn't know it's what I needed right now. How did that happen? Yeah, well, do you know what? It, it, there is a bit of a story. I'll try and make it smaller for you. But when me and Michael, so we we speak a lot. We we've, we've we've been friends for quite a few years. We've done specials on TV and stuff together. And we were chatting last year, and we were talking about you know let's let's actually make a record together. And Elite had begun, so I had a verse. He sent me a little bit of a pre-chorus. I sent the chorus. But up until about March this year, it, it sounded like a guy from. England and a guy from Vancouver making Latin <laughs> music. It, it it was good, but it didn't really sound very authentic. And then Michael said, "Hey, listen, my wife's from um, South America, and she she's really into this guy, and 
I think I think it could be a three way. So I was like, cool, let's try it. And in comes Sebastian Yatter. And I didn't know his music. As soon as I heard his music, really thought this is going to be great. I felt like he was a little too good looking for our <laughs> band. But, you know, everyone has, a, you know, everyone has issues. So, um, of course, soon as he put his voice on it, I was like, this now feels authentic. And so me and Michael actually redid our parts after he'd done his and, and that, so it was kind of a long journey, but we got there in the end. But you did it over three different time zones yeah. as well and remotely. How do you do that? Well, we've learned a lot, haven't we recently? Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I've done duets in the past over like ISDN and stuff, but but this was like we were pretty much on a when you're writing music and lyrics and things together, we were doing the three foot, you know, the Zoom thing a lot and uh, lots of messages, and yeah, it took forever. Um, if we were in a room, we, it took us about two hours, but it did take a, a long time. But you know what? It was part of the fun of. You know, we were just all, he, we were all locked up with nowhere to go. It gave us something to do, you know. Well, so this is the funny thing I think about this year. We've been so restricted, but through yeah. the, these restrictions, we realise there's no restrictions. You can do so much more than you thought you could do. And that brings me to your crooners sessions. They were so loved. Oh. Um, how did you feel about those? I, oh, I, it was, I, I, I leapt out of bed every morning because... <laughs> because what would happen was you know I'd say I'd, so everyone I did 60 of those in the end and wow. every single person on there was in my phone book so I had all their numbers their emails never, nothing was done for a manager or a record company it was all people I knew so what would happen is I'd fire out a few emails hey Tony how you doing nice to hope you're well fancy doing one of these and you know so you'd fire four or five of those out and you'd wake up in the morning and they'd be like let's do this song or let's do this song <laughs> and and then they'd ring you at like 11 a.m and you'd sit there and you'd be going should I do that verse or you so it was so much fun so much communication speaking to people talking the language of music then we'd film it and then we'd put it out it was just the best it really was um, so, you know, people said, you know, it kept us entertained, kept me entertained. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Um, do you know, I just got a shiver when you said that, not because like the music was great, but I was just like, you're talking about having all these people in your phone. Do you have <laughs> them under their real names? Because I'd be scared that if I lost my phone, I'd be losing all of their valuable information. Yeah, that's a very good point. It's like, the first time anyone's ever brought that up. So what are you going to do? Are they all I don't in their real name? Everyone's under their proper name, even with a photograph. Oh my! Okay, you don't know how much that phone is worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should think about that. You're very right. That's you very may... true. <laughs> well, while yeah. you think, while you think about that, before I let you go, um, yeah. your plans for Christmas? What are they? Do you have any? Uh, not really. Do you know what the what the one thing? So, so we've had a. Everyone keeps saying, "Oh, 2020, it's been a shit year, whatever." But I tell you what, the one thing I've learned is that is like family, family time. It's I mean, like little did we, you know, it's always just something we do, and oh, it's the weekend, let's do. It's been so important. You know, our oldest's 20 now. There's no way on earth he'd have spent three months with us. And we loved it. We loved having them with us. So for me, actually, a bit more of what we've had. Family for Christmas would be perfect. Well, enjoy that. Do you know what's been perfect? Chatting to you. You have just lifted my mood so much, Barry. <laughs> Thank you so much for the chat. Oh, it's lovely to speak to you.